Today we're going to be looking at Research Flow. This is an AI powered research tool. It makes detailed mind maps and lets you explore research topics more easily. You can upload your own articles or you can use it to search for articles on a particular topic. We're going to explore the website and then we could dive into trying some examples. So here we are on the website. On the homepage, they give us a couple of examples scrolling down, showing the first example where they've uploaded a PDF. It started mapping out the various bits of information and then some examples where they are doing a search. They are finding good citable information for you. I like with the site that the maps that they do actually have some detail. We've tested a couple of other tools in the past that either will do mind maps, but only with single word or very short headings. Or we've looked at tools that will write paragraphs and paragraphs, but they aren't as good at splitting up the information into digestible chunks. I think Research Flow has the nice balance between the two. It can also analyze charts as well. So we'll give it a little bit of a test of that, but that's definitely one where being able to pick out a chart or a graph and get some explanation about it is going to be really helpful. This is a feature that we have not seen very often in some of the other research tools that are out there. Once we log in, we get a very simple interface. So over here on the left, we've got a sidebar, we've got home and then the plus button for new research. When we're doing new searches, we can just go plus and it will build a new page for us or we can keep working on a page that we already started on. In the center, we've got the upload tab and then we've got the search tab. Search tab has different options of what we're searching. So we can search academic papers, the web, or we can get it to generate text without searching. So just using the large language model. They've got a really good filter here with the field of study, publication types, whether there is an open access PDF and the minimum citation count. We've got a switch for Pro. Pro has a limited number of uses, although honestly at 600, it's going to take a wee while to get through all of those. And then as once we've done one map, if we want to do new maps, we've got the plus new map here as well. One test I always like to do with these AI tools is to upload my PhD because at 250 pages, it is bigger and more dense than we would normally expect from things we're putting into these. I find it's a really good test. Definitely some of the AI tools have really struggled. And it uploaded very, very quickly, far quicker than they usually do. We can see that the AI is processing if we scroll down, it's starting to disappear a little bit off the screen, but we can zoom out to see what's going on. It has started breaking down what is happening in my PhD with the different chapter headings. Once it's run through your article that you've uploaded and it's created the different section headings, we'll notice that there's little numbers next to each of these. And if we click on these, we'll see an expansion and we can see that it's got a breakdown of the subheadings. For any of these components of our flow diagram, when we hover over, we can see that we have this menu here. We can click on Ask AI and we can get it to dive in, explain, simplify, example, or we can ask our own prompt. We can also specify whether we want that just out of the LLM, the entire web, or academic papers. As well as the Ask AI, we can add more cards to build out our flow diagram more. We can copy text, trace back to the origin, and then we've got a couple of formatting options here as well. If we come down to one of my more technical ones, let's go on this one about NetLogo. Let's go to Ask AI and let's get it to explain. It then gives us a new box with more detailed explanations. So we can build up our own model from this to be able to get a really nice clear picture of what's happening in any particular paper. In addition to this, up on the top left here, we've got this link research report and the research report has a bullet pointed summary of everything that it has then split out into the flow diagram. Next, I came to a, another one of these panels in the Ask AI. I ask it why the social homogamy index measure was the one that was used. And we can see that it is broken down here, an explanation into two parts, explaining the quantifying of the simulation results, so why use it, and then also a more meta answer of it being a way to complement the statistical analysis. When we have a PDF open, in the PDF view window, we have this little button here, graph shot. And so we can use that when we're on the pro version, we can select 
some formulae and we can then ask AI and have these other prompts here as well. So let's get it to explain this formula here, which is the formula for a basic log linear model. So it took a little bit of processing. We can see we've got my screenshot there and then there was no other context. All we had was that screenshot and then I used the ask AI and just said explain. And we can see it's identified correctly that it is a log linear model. And then it's gone through and it has got the equation. It's explaining the terms that are within the equation. It's giving the interpretation, model assumptions, and then applications. So that's an awful lot of information. So that's a really handy little summary that it's given us on this thing that if we were reading a PDF and we didn't know what it was, it's going to be really helpful. And because of the way that it's built, all of these can then be further explored with AI. So we can go ask AI, we can ask specific questions or get more explanation and summary if we would like. So let's really challenge it. Here we've got some diagrams. These are parameters from a quasi-independence log linear model. This is pretty niche. If you haven't specifically studied these, it is not going to make a lot of sense. And I'm not giving it any context. I'm just snipping the graph itself. And again, we're going to go for explain and I'm choosing explain rather than summarize because I don't want it to just say, well, there's a red line and it's trending down and there's a blue line and it's trending up. I want it to try and actually ex interpret and explain this graph. And I don't think it will because it is so niche, but let's have a look and see how it goes. Okay, so we snipped the graph. All we did was ask explain. And so detailed explanation of diagonal dominance factors graph. So graph provides crucial insights on the patterns of homogamy. That is exactly what it does. From reading this, it looks like it is taking context from the PDF. There's information here that you could only get if you're also taking that context. But what's really impressive is that I didn't ask it to. It has taken this graph and then it is looking at the text all around it. And in fact, some of it not directly above and below it, but some of it from other parts of the document. And we can see that it starts off explaining what those factors are. So here was our log linear model. This bit was a fair bit earlier. In fact, I think in an earlier chapter where it's explaining the measurement that I am plotting in that graph. Here's the formula it comes from. Here's what it actually is. And we could dive deeper into that. That's really impressive. I'm very, very impressed by how it picked that out. It then gives the trends. This next bit, this is definitely not my language. So it's kind of, it's coming up with some of this itself. But again, actually pretty good. The Pacific trend reversal, that was actually quite a big deal. So my PhD was looking at intermarriage between different ethnic groups. Whilst there was increased mixing between most groups, uh, young Pacific people were actually bucking that trend. And we can see here that it highlights that. And it highlights it just in a way other than how I went about saying it. Next up, we've got the methodological considerations. It's explaining some details like the log scale on the graph. It's a very important thing to note when we have log scale that log scale is compressing all those differences those differences are much more extreme than they first appear because of that log scale we can see the gap from 1 to 10 to 50 to 100 there so it has identified that by itself without plucking stuff out of the text impressed by that and then it gets into a little bit more broader stuff from the thesis so that's really good i think that little tool there that graph shot is probably a selling point on its own above and beyond being able to make these mind maps it is really really handy to be able to take a pdf and be able to grab formulae and grab graphs and get a really good well-structured coherent interpretation of what's going on when we flick back over to our research report tab we'll notice that these two new bits that i've added log linear model equation explanation has now been added to the bottom of the research report as has my graph and then the discussion about the graph so if we don't want to have to navigate the flow diagram style, it is nicely listed there. And again, it's really done a great job. And if we want more detail, we can just go into those little sections. And with this layout, it does make it much easier to prompt. If we get something and it's in a big chunk of text in this research report, it's harder to be able to just grab a certain bit and say, well, 
I want to learn more about that. Whereas over here, where it is split up into these boxes, it's nice and it's a bit easier to be able to do that. So this has been a really nice exploration of the research flow flow diagrams for something that we've uploaded. Now let's go back to the homepage and let's go with a search instead of an upload and see how it does there. So we'll run something fairly straightforward. Does creatine supplementation increase strength? We're going to search academic papers and let's run it. And then maybe we'll come back, we'll run it a second time, see whether the pro search gives us a different set of answers. So I've run this twice now. When we ask a question, it then builds up a research report, a little bit like what we saw before. We can see that it's come up with some subheadings. In this case, what is creatine supplementation effects? optimized supplementation conclusion and a list of references it does do something funny i'm not sure if this is a bug or not that it doesn't actually properly hyperlink when i flick over to the pro version this was neatly hyperlinked and it gave a little bit more detail as well but it's given us the report it's then chunked up the bits and pieces here into the flow diagram so if we zoom out a little bit you can see the quite elaborate flow diagram there you can imagine if you were trying to do some planning and mind mapping around a research question this could be really helpful let's take a look at the pro version and see what the differences are so we can see on the pro version we now get our references properly hyperlinked and rather than just bullet points, we actually get something that's just a little bit more formatted and has a little bit more text attached to it. It covers very similar content and it has quoted some of the same references. In fact, mostly the same references, but the level of writing and level of detail is just a little bit improved. When we come out here to the right hand side, we can zoom out a little bit and we can see not identical, but similar looking flow diagram when we zoom in just a little bit more detail on each of our boxes and as with my own article with this one each of these has the ask ai where i can ask questions i can dive in i can get it to explain i can do this other stuff to complement what is already here so it could be that maybe i see something and i might ask if there's been any studies that contradict this and we can see that we now have this extra card contradictory studies and off that quite a number of boxes here with some decent detail and some studies for us to go and follow up where there was maybe something that contradicted what we already had for any ai research tool it's really important to be able to test things like this we don't want a tool that's overly agreeable because we won't end up with the correct facts we'll end up with it saying what it thinks we want to hear so this is nice that it will give us the contradictory studies i really like that it is able to prompt off any of the boxes within our flow diagram from our setting earlier it has focused on articles where there is the pdf so we have all of the pdfs linked here as well this is handy that we can just click on these and within our pdf browser window it'll then bring up the pdf so that's really handy for being able to check on the actual original articles to be able to verify what's getting said from the model Having now run a couple of tests, I can pop out the sidebar and we can see the history of my recent ones that I've tried. So this has been Research Flow. I really like the way that it is able to map out into this flow diagram or mind map, but with a little bit more detail than some of the other mind mapping tools that we've seen before. The pro version adds some additional detail, but I think the free version gives just enough that you'll be able to give it a decent test and decide whether it's a tool that is going to be useful for you. I hope this has been helpful. I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI research stats and random stuff.